What's up YouTube? Uh, van dwellers in general, it's Friday. It's a little overcast. And since I finished up my other edits, I figured I would make another video. So, without further ado, let's go. Gotta find cables now. Now, if you're like me, you spend way too much time on the internet. The problem is, I live in a van, so internet access is kind of limited. If I want to get internet, I have to go to Starbucks, or McDonald's, Burger King, or Taco Bell, or really any place that serves me food that I shouldn't be eating too much of. Or at all. <laughs> Usually I can work uh, outside of the building too, like if I park close, there's some Wi-Fi access, but it's not that great and it tapers off if you leave the parking lot. And that's kind of annoying, because, you know, if I ever want to get on the internet, I have to go to these places. I can't just hit it from a park. So today I have a solution for all of you. If you watch the series Mr. Robot, one of my favorite TV series, you know that Elliot constructs a Wi-Fi booster slash sniper out of a USB adapter and a can of Pringles. What are you doing? Making a high-powered antenna. I need to piggyback off someone else's Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi booster in itself is pretty simple. There's only a few things that you need. Pringles can, obviously. Six feet of extension cable so that I can mount this on my roof. And then our USB adapter. This is a Netgear 300N adapter. It was the cheapest thing that I found at Best Buy. You can get more expensive things. You can get different bands. Um, but from what I read up on online this is kind of what you're shooting for also it closely represents what they used in Mr. Robot so just kidding I'm still gonna eat these now you're actually gonna want to measure the diameter of your Pringles can or whatever can that you're using because this actually has to do a lot with science God now he wants to have a heart to heart you really have to know is the diameter, um, you're gonna take from the lid, like such, this is a three inch can, as you can see, and then you're gonna plug this into the calculator that I have a link below. Um, there are guys that have been doing this for a while now and they know all of the math. We're gonna go over the math later on, but essentially you're going to want to figure out how big your can is and then that will determine where you place your adapter. I have, marked 1.21 inches on the bottom of my Pringles can. Just gonna cut into there, make a little opening. I don't remember exactly what happened next, but somehow I got lost. Just like that, we have a Wi-Fi booster. So let's go try it out. All right, let's talk science. Science! Um, in order to understand what we're doing, we need to talk about Wi-Fi for a second. So here's your computer, and here is a modem or access point. I'm gonna put an anchor, because this is like, uh, router. Here's what happens when you go into Starbucks or you go into a restaurant, your computer and your phone emit Wi-Fi signals in an omnidirectional um, uh, fashion. So as those signals pick up that um, anchor, it establishes a connection. Now, depending on how close you are, that determines how strong that connection is, right? But if you leave that circle, you're gonna have zero Wi-Fi. So what an antenna does, specifically a directional antenna, is it focuses that beam. So rather than go in all directions like this, you have a single direction. Now the reason why a cantenna works is because a little thing called constructive interference. 
this is why the dimensions of the can are very important because if you look at a can, we have the walls and the base, the reflecting part. We also have our node or our probe or your active element. For our experiment, this active element is our USB. And here's our little cable, right? Now what happens is, as your computer emits those Wi-Fi rays, they're gonna come out like this. And as those waves keep hitting that base, it's gonna send them out and they're gonna build and build and build. And pretty soon, instead of having one Wi-Fi wave, right, as this thing emits stuff, they're gonna get focused and we get something called constructive interference. It's this constructive interference that allows us to boost our Wi-Fi signal bum, 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 to much greater distances. But if our can is too short or too long or the dimensions are off or however you want it, and let's say you have your probe, it's gonna send out those waves but they're not going to align at all. Essentially, you get chaos and those waves die off. They scatter again, right? This is bad. So in order for your cantenna to work, you need to have certain dimensions. From the base to your active element, one-fourth the wavelength. From the back to the front, it's three-fourths the wavelength. The diameter, one-half the wavelength. And from probe center to the side of the can, one-fourth the wavelength. For a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal, that distance is about 124 millimeters. That's the wavelength, okay? If we can line this up, we have a good placement for our active element, our can has the right size dimensions, um, our wave is going to be able to get that constructive interference and we're going to be able to boost our Wi-Fi signal. Okay, I'm driving into town to test out the new antenna. We're gonna hit up some Starbucks. So, here we are at Starbucks, we're only 50 feet away. If we open up our available networks, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 access points. That's pretty common, in fact that's standard. I think for the area that I'm in, I'm at a mall essentially. And there's Starbucks. So if we hit connect. Connected, open. Try. Oh look, there's Facebook. Ta-da. Perfect. Not like super fast speeds right now, which is to be expected. I'm outside of the building and I only have one bar of service, but that's pretty good. Now, take our USB. We connect the uh, the antenna. Nice. So I guess on my computer setup, it comes up here, Wi-Fi two. And okay. Nice. So here's here's the compare contrast. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven APs. With the Canon, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two APs. We doubled the amount of APs with a little Canon. That's pretty cool. So, not bad. Let's go out further and see what we can do. So 
So now I'm on the opposite side of the parking lot. We're probably a hundred meters out, or sorry, hundred yards. It's the same thing. Can isn't connected at all. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven access points. Not bad. Notice, uh, Starbucks isn't on the list here. Except the Dark Knight is, and I'm not sure who. So I've got the cannon pointed towards Starbucks. I'm gonna plug it in. Nice. Go to Wi-Fi 2. Starbucks! It's only one bar though. <laughs> And the seven APs that we had is now 1, 2, 3, 4, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 APs. Man, I wonder if this thing is like multi-dimensional. I'm going to rotate it. Let's go see what happens. Okay, so I've rotated it 180 degrees. If we come over here to Wi-Fi. Um, so yeah, this is without the can. We've got five APs. One, two, three, four, five. Take our USB, plug it in. Automatic update. We get still Starbucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, FBI van. And 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 APs. Good laws. And I'm gonna run a test on that. Let's see if we can get Starbucks from here and connect to it. can't connect to this network. Okay, that's no surprise. Okay, so that confirms my fears. Um, the Pringles can is good, sort of. It does boost Wi-Fi and when I'm close to the building, you know, I can stay kind of parked off to the side and I can still use the Wi-Fi, but optimize, like the optimal situation is for me to go indoors to use the Wi-Fi. Um, it's pretty cool. I mean, you can see the difference in APs, and while they're not 100%, like, you can move your van around and actually get a really good Wi-Fi connection. So, the Pringles Can Cannon, it worked. Um, not very well, though. <laughs> it did boost Wi-Fi, so while I was just outside of Starbucks, I was able to move my connection just up a little bit. It still wasn't inside. It wasn't the high speed that you typically get at a Starbucks, but you know, there was some improvement there. We definitely went from only having seven APs to 22 APs or 24 APs in some instances. So that's great, but as far as being a directional can and it, it really didn't matter which way I pointed it, really, I, I still got the same Wi-Fi everywhere. So Mr. Robot, as far as your high powered Wi-Fi can and, and antenna is concerned, it doesn't really look like it's very high powered but after reading on the forums apparently Pringles cans aren't even that optimal it's just something fun that you can try out you need a bigger can to make things work and so for the sake of this video we're gonna try it again with this so big can test now uh, go over to my Wi-Fi we've got one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven APs. We connect the big can. Boom! One, two, three, four, five, six, two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five APs. Bringing home the big bucks, but it looks like we have just a little bit better connection for Starbucks. Gonna see if we can connect. Nope, can't connect to that network from this far away. Um, 
potbelly Wi-Fi, maybe. Connect to this one. Can't connect to that network. We're gonna have to optimize our distance, hold on. Okay, I feel like we've closed maybe half the distance from our last shot, so we're 50 yards out from the store. Um, check our Wi-Fi, normal Wi-Fi, we've got Starbucks, one bar, two, crap, three, four, five, six, seven, seven APs. Now I reach back, grab the can, seven APs. that one in boosted Wi-Fi okay one two three four five six seven eight nine dark night ten eleven twelve ooh the weed hot spot nice 15 17 18 19, 20, 21, 21 APs. Now for the real test. Google Starbucks, connect. Yes! All right, let's, uh, let's test our, our speed. Okay, speed test, we're connected. Connecting. Okay, so just over 11 megapig. Megabyte, sorry. And upload is slower than snot. <laughs> Eight. Okay, but let's say you're sleeping at night. You're hanging out in the parking lot. You don't want to be up against the Starbucks because, you know, that's creepy. You're just stealing their Wi-Fi, right? But we come over here and we want to watch, oh, I don't know, Zed's Dead and Millennium. Streaming like no other. And I'm still like 50 yards out from the establishment. Not bad. I can't complain about that at all. So ultimately I'm surprised. Uh, the little Pringles can cannon uh, did well. I mean, considering it's a Pringles can and just some cardboard, I really thought the interior was some sort of reflective uh, substance, but I guess it's not. It's just to protect the chips that's, that are in there. So it's not aluminum at all. But the potato sticks can, I think is lined with a similar substance, but it might be just a little bit more reflective. Um, it's also got a bigger base. So as far as connectivity is concerned, there's a lot more to reflect there and a lot more to pull. So I'm very happy with the results of that can. Um, keep in mind, everything that I've done today, I've used like bare minimum. I walked into Best Buy, I bought the cheapest thing that was available. The adapter was $30 and then the extension cable was like 20 bucks. I mean, you can pick that thing up on eBay for $5. So if you've got patience and time and wanna go, look into the pieces themselves, you could get a dirt cheap setup uh, for even less than I spent today. I spent $50 in total for everything and now I have a Wi-Fi booster. But if you research it and get something different, like a 600N dual band Wi-Fi adapter, or you know, you've got the new uh, AC connections, um, those I'm sure would perform a lot better. I'm going to include links down below to the resources that I've had access to, some of the converters, um, the tools that allow you to, to measure out distances, so on and so forth. You can do your own research um, for those who are interested. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, share it with somebody that you know who would need a Wi-Fi booster, is living in a van or a truck or somebody that, you know, you just want to make their day or not you know an annoying co-worker share it with them I don't care but smash that like button 
and hit the subscribe button if you want to keep following me. I've got more videos coming out with van hacks and tips that I'm learning living out here on the road. Comment down below if you have any questions for me or you want to learn something about the van life. I read every single one of them and I appreciate your compliments. Um, this project was kind of big and although it's kind of meaningless in a way, um, I'm having the time of my life so I appreciate it guys. Keep coming and uh, we'll see you next time.